Live from Miami Beach, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering .next Conference, brought to you by Nutanix. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Steamy Miami. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com. Here with SiliconANGLE TV's live coverage from .next, Nutanix's inaugural user conference, talking to the users, talking to the executives, and talking to the partner ecosystem. I'm um, really excited to have uh, to, uh, Vijay Tiwari, who's the Principal Group Program Manager with Microsoft, and Sunil Pody also joining us back from Nutanix. Uh, Vijay, th thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Stu, thank you for having us here. All right, so, you know, Microsoft, I mean, we were talking off camera about here, there's been a you know, big change, uh, you know, it definitely the last few years, and especially the conversation since you know, Satya Nadella became CEO, cloud is front, or front and center, virtualizations, uh, you know, you know, very important piece. Tell us first a little bit about your role at Microsoft, uh, you know, what you do there. Certainly, so, you know, as you pointed out, you know, Microsoft is certainly partners with a lot of uh, partners in the ecosystem to help our partners build solutions for customers. So my role in the company is to help our partners build engineered solutions for the private cloud, enabling all the way down from the portal technology, all the way down through storage and through and to the hypervisor. Yeah. So my job is to work with companies like Nutanix and others to help them build end-to-end -end private cloud solutions for customers. Yeah, uh, it was interesting. We were talking to, to, to Sunil before about you know software companies and platforms and, and the ecosystem because you know not no one company really can do it all today, and those that think they can do it all you know probably are going to have some tough time competing. Um, you know, maybe Sunil, maybe start start off. You know, why is why is Microsoft an important you know partner? Well, um, you know, we we do like VJ quite a lot. <laughs> you know, it starts there, by the way, right? <laughs> um, look, I think uh, in general, if you look at our um, uh, application workloads, because you know, at the end of the day, our infrastructure supports uh, application workloads in terms of the efficacy of how they run and how they are deployed. And uh, over a period of time, most of our workloads are actually powered by Microsoft technology in reality, right? Um, Original VDI workloads, obviously, under the cover have uh, Microsoft technologies. Then when we started introducing Hyper-V, with for supporting Exchange, SQL Server, I'm SharePoint, I mean, there's a whole bunch of like application workloads itself that makes Microsoft a first class citizen from a partnership perspective. And then over the last year, we've had great collaboration, as uh, Vijay mentioned, about multiple dimensions that we can get into that essentially fostered a lot of uh, goodwill between the two teams, not just in the product side or the leadership side, but also in the sales and channel side. And that has brought us even more closer to be a lot more confident and uh, trusting of a long-term relationship that we are on on this journey of invisible infrastructure. Yeah. And I think you know, to add to what Sunil said, I think you know, it all starts with sort of you know, what do customers want. And, uh, and I think one of the great things about something like Nutanix is that they really focus on solving a customer problem and then going from there. And I think that's a vision that both Nutanix and Microsoft share. And so our collaboration actually started from the perspective of solving a real customer problem. And as you know, as Sunil mentioned, you know, a whole bunch of uh, workloads that run actually on, on uh, Nutanix and Microsoft workloads. And so we've been hearing a lot about Nutanix from our customers as well. And so that's obviously led to a great partnership uh, in the offing between Nutanix and Microsoft. All right, so, so Vijay, I think there's some people that are going to see the Acropolis announcement and be surprised to see Microsoft partnering there. I mean, you guys have your own hypervisor, um, you know, and even when they talk about things like KVM is, you know, well, you know, Microsoft apps are hugely important, so, right. you know, is it just more apps and you want to live everywhere, but you really want Hyper-V, you know, well, well, what's the positioning? Well, you know, so, uh, the multiple things, right? So first and foremost, you know, Nutanix at its core is a multi-hypervisor company, right? Uh, they support, uh, you know, multiple hypervisors, including Hyper-V, and we are we are very encouraged by that. Uh, they have a great storage platform today, uh, enhancing up into the management plane, and we certainly want to participate with that in our with our uh, with our hypervisor platform, as uh, as well as with the work that they're doing to help customers get to Azure. Uh, in addition, you know, our customers demand that you know you get the best opportunity to run on the best platform, and we want to participate in that opportunity with them. Great. So, so and I, th yeah. I think just to add a little bit on that, I think when we look at Acropolis being the the first order bit of it being around, you know, freeing applications uh, to actually be mobile across runtimes, as we've talked about, and you know, in, in the last year, year and a half, Microsoft has proven that they're 
great at embracing and embodying disruptive technologies by pushing Azure front and center, by pushing Office 365, right? And I think you know we we ourselves in Nutanix are very emboldened by the fact that you know Microsoft, it's a new Microsoft in terms of look, I'm I'm willing to disrupt myself a little bit for the greater good of the customer ecosystem as well as, so I think in terms of Azure for the private cloud, how it works seamlessly with the public cloud and so forth, Nutanix can become a, you know, a great potential partner that will help free apps so that they're not locked into a particular hypervisor, it doesn't matter what it is. They can run on Hyper-V, they can run on the Acropolis hypervisor, or they can run on Azure seamlessly, right? So it behooves us as a partnership to now prove to our customer why the target destination where Hyper-V and Azure become preferred vehicles. And that's what we intend to do. Yeah, so I um, wonder if we could dig into some, some of the engineering that might need to be done between the companies. Uh, I think about you know multi-cloud, on-prem, off-prem, identity's hugely important, and Active Directory mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, really sets the bar for the industry. And then from a management standpoint, you now have you know, XCP and you guys have SCVMM. Sure. So how do those fit together? What do you work together? What are the swim lanes maybe? maybe so start, let's start you know. with you know, sort of concrete things that we have done in the past and you know, let the story emerge from there. So first and foremost, you know, uh, about a year back, you know, uh, Nutanix and Microsoft partnered in what is called as a private cloud fast track program, and there, effectively, what was done was that you know, ref, uh, Nutanix, based on a reference architecture, actually submitted a fast track solution, which integrates, uh, you know, the Nutanix uh, distributed storage platform with Hyper-V and System Center and with Windows Azure Pack. So that really sort of starts to enable customers to get sort of Azure-like capabilities on premises by integrating you know, strongly with the, uh, with, the, with, the, with the Nutanix stack. And then moving forward, you know, we're looking at a couple of different opportunities to continue the partnership on. You know, certainly as a part of the, uh, the, the, the cross, uh, uh, the platform that, you know, the community edition that uh, Nutanix announced, we're looking at sort of enabling customers to be able to do more with the community edition. And then uh, you'll see us make a few more announcements in the future about additional solutions that we're going to partner with Nutanix and bring to fruition in the market. Yeah, PJ, I have to tell you, I've been kind of a little shocked and impressed at how much open source collaboration and participation that Microsoft is having. I mean, this is not the Microsoft that I grew up in IT well, with. Well, uh, Satya said yeah. it best, we love Linux, and uh, you know, by analogy, we, run, we have no, we have no, uh, Open source is, is as accepted in Microsoft as any other form of software in, in the company today. So, uh, you know, from our perspective, if it helps solve a customer need, you know, it doesn't matter where the source is from. Yeah, so Sunil, I mean, there's so many touch points in, inside Microsoft. Um, is the application the most part? Is it the, you know, hypervisor and cloud options? You know, what, 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 what are your customers Yeah, I mean, I, I think with? to some extent to uh, Vijay's point, the, it always starts obviously with the customer need around the application workloads. I mean, nobody's just going to come to us and say, look, we need a, a KVM hypervisor. I mean, it's, that's not going to happen. I think that the part is going to be around, look, we need these you know, uh, workloads. How many of them are powered by Microsoft technologies? We believe a majority are. And to the extent that we can work together to provide the best experience, both from a deployment and operations perspective, the underlying runtime becomes you know, almost uh, secondary. And to the extent that we can actually tightly integrate Hyper-V as a first class citizen, which we fully intend to do, extend that seamlessly into Azure, and then expose that as the best runtime for Microsoft workloads, then I think we have a great partnership ahead. Yeah. Uh, BJ, you know, speaking of kind of the containerization, give us the update, where are we with you know, containerization for Microsoft, and uh, you know, it, it, probably a little bit further out, but how does that fit into the whole So a couple of different chance. vectors on containers. Yeah. You know, we first announced a great partnership with Docker. Mm -hmm. You know, Azure actually runs a whole bunch of container technology there. Uh, you know, you can run core OS inside Microsoft Azure, and it can spin up containers. In fact, this morning, the demo that you saw in the keynote, yeah. where you know, Binny from uh, from Nutanix actually spun up a whole bunch of containers, uh, a large number of them actually ended up were running on Azure. That's one part of it. Uh, then Microsoft itself has announced native Windows containers. We actually in, uh, uh, announced two types of containers. One is called uh, Windows Server containers, and the other is called Hyper-V containers. Uh, with Hyper-V containers, you get a lot more isolation and security is isolated boundaries. And then with Windows, you know, you get uh, a, a, you know, uh, less isolation, but you get you know, large scale uh, from a containerization, containerization stand, uh, standpoint. And all of this, you know, at the front end, will integrate with Docker. So we got a very powerful story that emerges for customers who want to be able to use containers regardless of whether they happen to be Linux containers or the whether they happen to be Windows containers. And I think that's another place where you know, 
the integration with, with XCP will be important. You know, uh, today they demonstrated uh, the ability for you to spin up containers right from inside Prism. And, uh, you know, that, that by extension, you know, by virtue of the integration that we have, that will extend to also be able to build off of Windows containers when they're available in the next release of server. So Neil? Yeah, yeah. He said it all. Oh, he said it all. <laughs> Absolutely great. Containerization uh, it is done. Um, yeah, to, give us a little bit of insight. How, how long is the partnership? You know, what regularly calls? Uh, are you guys meeting at the customer for some of these? Uh, you know, share share a little bit more about how. Uh, so how now let me. I understand. As I, as I mentioned a little bit, you know, we organically uh, raised the bar from a need of making Microsoft a strategic partner even before we had a formal relationship because most of the workloads that we targeted were Microsoft applications. Then as we started internalizing Hyper-V as a platform among our portfolio, then we started the, the joint discussions and uh, you know, Vijay mentioned about the series of things that we had done in terms of Fast Track, Azure Pack. In fact, we're increasingly seeing not just uh, Microsoft workload deployments, uh, whether it pulls in Hyper-V or just natively Hyper-V deployments, as I mentioned, you know, we're seeing about a 70% growth in our Hyper-V uh, as a hypervisor market um, from our quarter over quarter numbers. Right? It's pretty significant. But we're also now seeing many of our customers, actually in fact, one of the, some of the customers that are on our stage and so forth, they're also adopting Azure Pack or maybe Azure in some, shot, uh, some shape or shot. So I think, I think the, that we are at the cusp of, I think, the new Microsoft <laughs> um, really emerging beyond just the public cloud where they've made a significant impact into the private enterprise and uh, doing it in a way where you can truly own enterprise workloads both in and out. And I think that's why I think there's a mutually beneficial partnership long term. Yeah, and I think you know uh, nothing behooves a strong partnership um, other than deep engineering relationships and uh, we're sort of in the path to actually continue that deep partnership at the engineering level and then good things emerge out of that, emerge out of that for customers. Yeah, so I, I was going through my notes on all the announcements and there's one that seems like a perfect proof point of this, the iSCSI MPIO exchange support. Yep. Um, I, I, I tell you, we've had, for years, we've been having the discussion on, you know, should exchange only be DAS? Yeah. Uh, really, yeah. I've, I've fought with Microsoft yeah. for years on that. No, yeah. of course, it's a Hyper-V, you can virtualize it, but everything yep. else, yeah. so, yeah, I mean, where are we with the exchange and this solution? Uh, no, that, but that I, 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 I mean, let me chime yeah. in, is yeah. that basically, it took us a while to get here because you know we actually started our company was originally iSCSI based, didn't work for some workloads. We switched over to NFS, and then um, you know we have iSCSI uh, for say the you know the KVM portion. But one of the things that we realized was most of the Acropolis workloads, as an Acropolis as the platform workloads for Microsoft apps, you know feedback was around native MPIO support for iSCSI. And uh, you know, eventually, you know, we just adopted it as a first-class uh, implementation. It's taken a while for us to implement it because that actually exposes our NDFS file system now. It's no longer a, just a file system because now we have lots yep. of interface, right? So that's one of the reasons why we are also calling it a dis distributed storage fabric. Yep. And uh, we already have great success in uh, exchange deployments, as an example. I, I did give an example of, you know, yeah, we can do 10,000. You know, greater than 10,000 mailboxes in a 4U form factor. I mean, that normally would take about a rack or so in the normal world, right? So, you know, we're looking forward to great, uh, great uh, uptake of the iSCSI for Exchange over the next six months. And you know, in, in addition to that, you know, they also talked about sort of the uh, the SMB-based filer this morning. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's their implementation of the SMB protocol. Again, you know, kind of the great work that you know we both done said, look. Customers are asking for a file-based mechanism for a filer. They've got a great underlying substrate for storage. Layer a you know scale our file server on top with the with an SMB head, and that provides a lot of value to customers. So all over you know right from the underlying storage fabric right through the virtualization layer, all the way up onto the cloud layer and the management layer, we got multiple touch points of integration that we are seeing between Nutanix and us. All right, so so BJ, you know. Talk a little bit about just you know the ecosystem in general. Um, you know we, we talked on the last segment with Sunil about you know th there was kind of VMware built out a big ecosystem. You know what's your thinks, thoughts on Nutanix's ecosystem and Microsoft's and you know how do they over overlap and cross pollinate? So I think you know uh, first of all I uh, you know it's been great to see sort of this conference and the yeah. number of partners that are out here. And I was just walking around sort of the the, the expo center and the number of partners who are here. You know, demonstrating a genuine interest in participating with, with Nutanix, as well as customers who are actually bringing 
core problems, and you know, I see a lot of discussion on the whiteboard about all the kinds of interesting things that they, that they are happening. Um, you know, Microsoft has always focused on building out a partner of eco uh, ecosystem of partners to help customers achieve what they are really trying to achieve. In the in the convergence space, you know, we like you pointed out, it's certainly not the case that one partner is going to be able to do it all, but we certainly see that the dramatic simplification that uh, convergence brings to customers, whether they happen to be storage and compute in the case of Nutanix, or we are seeing other innovative architectures which actually converge the entire solution all the way down to networking. We have our own solution called the Microsoft Cloud Platform System which does the same thing as well. Uh, the goal is to basically make the life of customers easy inside the data center. And to achieve that, you have to bring in the right set of partners which can which provide the integration and not is not done at the backs of the customer, rather it's done you know, with, with uh, pre-engineered solutions that we give out to the uh, to the customers. And our partnership with Nutanix and other partners, and that's the ecosystem that we try to foster now so that customers are not having to deal with the complexity in the data center. Yeah, I think um, to, to some extent, as part of the evolution of Microsoft into the hybrid cloud environment, leveraging Azure public cloud as a you know key linchpin, I think um, the the ability to create the new design point becomes very important, right? So CPS as the logical construct manifested as, you know, maybe a runtime run version implemented by Nutanix or other implementations, I think will be the way to foster Azure Pack or next generation CPS-like technologies so that that's really how we see the acceleration of the private cloud happening while being open to a public cloud construct. All right, so, so Neil, um, I got a question from the audience that says, how many iPhones have you lost in the last 24 months? <laughs> Actually, last 24 months, uh, I lost one. I said, I didn't lose one, I broke one. <laughs> but before that, just as a, as a, as a setup question was, uh, I used to have a high frequency of iPhone losses. <laughs> right in the first year of the iPhone, for Mirac, I think I think my team took most of them. Right, by the way, <laughs> I still haven't found many of them. But anyway, it's That's one 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 way to incentivize your team, I guess. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, if only right. I could get some Windows phones, man. Maybe I could. <laughs> well, uh, if you had asked me the question, I would have said none because I have only a Windows phone. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. It sounds like there's an opportunity. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, you know, VJ, want to give you kind of the, the closing remarks on on, on this. Um, you know. We look at this space, kind of the hyperconvergence, um, and gosh, but just you know, where do we expect to see Microsoft more? Because to be honest, they were a little quiet. You know, Azure's been real busy, Hyper-V has been busy, um, but you know, maybe touch on you know hyperconvergence, things like OpenStack. Should we expect to see more visible Microsoft? Is it a partnering activity? You know, I know we're at the Nutanix show, but you know, sh show us a little bit as to what to expect from Microsoft. Sure. This so year. before I go anywhere, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Nutanix on a fantastic event, right? Vinod Khosla said it really well, you know, a thousand people on the first user conference, that's a great achievement uh, uh, by Nutanix. Um, you know, Microsoft, you know, uh, we announced at Ignite uh, a new version of our stack called the Microsoft Azure stack, which literally brings the Azure technologies on premise. Uh, it, uh, it basically builds the compute resources and networking providers, so you basically have the ability to sort of at runtime decide where you want your application to be deployed, whether it happens to be deployed on premise, or in the public cloud. That's a great advancement that we're bringing forth for customers, so they actually don't have to make a decision about where that application is built or deployed at design time. Rather, it's done actually at the deployment time. In the context of OpenStack, you know, we are participants in the OpenStack community. You know, Windows Server, you know, we participate in the OpenStack, and Windows Server we support as a part of uh, OpenStack distributions. And so we're certainly you know, looking forward to continue our participation with the OpenStack community as well. Uh, but certainly, you know, our preference is not to get beholden to a sort of, uh, uh, all these things are a means to an end. I think that was highlighted this morning at the keynote as well. And what we really focused on is enabling customers to achieve their goals, both in terms of the economics, in terms of the challenges that they're facing today in the data center. And that's what we are really hoping to focus on bringing to, uh, as solutions to partners, uh, with partners to customers. All right, uh, so Vijay, thank you so much for joining. Sunil, thank you for, for coming back. Uh, I think it's, it's Sunil has called it the A block, which you know Azure <laughs> is, is, is definitely a part of. Um, look forward to watching uh, you know, all of what's going on in Microsoft and, and this growing partnership. Uh, we'll be right back with lots more here from Nutanix's inaugural .conf conference. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for lots more.